All right, so between Pinterest and Zoom going public, one profitable, the other not. But so far these days, Wall Street doesn't care to distinguish one way or the other. The appetite for these things is still strong. We'll see how the next few days goes. Let's get the read from the Wall Street Journal's Maureen Farrell. We've got Fox Business's Deidre Bolton and Vantag Group CIO Dave Vonson. Dave, um... The reception of these stocks, these offerings today, what do you make of it? Uh, we continue to have a real small float amount that they are selling in the primary. Really small. It's very yeah. small. Helps uh, keep it higher, and then you have to kind of watch the thing play out. Uh, look, the Lyft, the Lyft IPO is not a good story. I mean, you don't want the thing uh, but Lyft dropping. But had a strong first day. A strong first right? day, and then you drop 25% after. That's my point. Now, again, I'm presupposing when I say that that we're talking about investors, not first day people. Understood. And so I think that that kind of culture of the 90s is, is so far over. It's been a long time over. And I, I talked when Lyft came out. Uh, I spent many, many years with Morgan Stanley as managing director there. And I remember like it was yesterday, the Facebook IPO, them begging us take more right. shares at the final minute and so forth. If you have a lot of access to it, it means you don't want it. And if you really want it, it means you're not going to get access to it. And to Dave's point, or you know, Facebook tumbled. If you got into that just a couple of months later, you'd be richly rewarded because it, it is since sort. Um, Timing is everything, I grant you, but what do you think of the appetite for this stuff? Because a lot of these were delayed because of the government shutdown and just a lot of companies were holding off. Would this encourage more to follow now? What do you think? For sure. I think the appetite is voracious among investors. Um, Lyft obviously has stumbled, but then there's a question of pricing. There are a lot of questions around it. But I mean, today's performance, Pinterest, they priced it above the range. Right. Now it's up 20 something percent. I was percent. surprised by that. I thought, you know, they were going to be cautious, but they weren't, right? Yeah. And I mean, I think Pinterest, at least on the roadshow, has tried to say, OK, we're really not a, like a social media company. We're not like Snap. You should think of us more like Google because what we're are they, by the engine. way? It's like, well, I would say it's like a kind of um, digital board. So if you're interested in recipes, you pin recipes. Right. If you're interested in fashion, you pin fashion. Sort of like an old-fashioned lookbook that you would just go through digitally pinning. And one big change that the company made, which is actually earning them a lot of money, is if you see something you like, yeah. you can just pick, you know, put your finger on it and you can buy it immediately. So now they have relationships with retailers. Okay. So right. And know, obviously there's a demand. Revenue. There's a clear demand for it. You know, Dave, um, uh, if I could switch and go back into this Mueller report with you. Uh, if Wall Street were worried about what's in it and they digested it and sort of shrugged their shoulders, are they doing it at their own peril, especially when you hear people like Jerry Nadler talking up, uh, I think there's obstruction of justice and all. In other words, were they more or less, you know, getting relieved, but for no reason. Well, I, I'm not worried about what Wall Street uh, thinking that way because I know Wall Street was not thinking that way. I'm worried about regular investors that might have thought that. Uh, there has been absolutely no interest from Wall Street in this entire investigation from the day after the special counsel was announced. The day that it was announced, the market dropped, I think, 300 points. And since then, there hasn't been an iota of movement in the market related to this, up or down. So the idea that it's over now, it isn't a big relief to markets because the markets never cared to begin with. It was never going to be an earnings impacting event. And the fact of the matter was we've known for some time that this whole thing was going to sort of fizzle. There's a political story. There's, you know, a uh, reason for people that are really, really partisan to kind of dive in one way on right, either right. side. But as far as market actors that are very efficient and very profit driven, this is a total nothing burger. You know, the reason why I raise it more into is that we I know Wall Street typically loves an environment where, you know, there are loggerheads and nothing is getting done, split government, I get that. But there are a couple of big things that have to be decided relatively soon, like what happens on the trade front, whether Congress can pass Mexican and Canada deals. Uh, and if that's stymied by or interrupted by all this other stuff, that 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 could be a problem, couldn't it? It could be. What I think that has been fascinating is how much everything's just been shrugged off. I mean, there yeah. are all these like macroeconomic worries, global concerns, and there's just this fear of missing out, whether it's on the IPOs, whether it's the stock market. Um, that seems to be driving things, investors, much more than Well, worries. that's a classic bull market sign, right? Poten yeah, potentially. I mean, there, there are many elements that look very bull market and maybe bubbly on some 
a lot of yeah, levels. Well, there's investors but... actually now suing Lyft, right? And there, there's two class action lawsuits filed in San Francisco saying you overhyped your offering. But that, I feel like, is boo-hoo, right? I mean, let the buyer be right. fair. You don't have to participate if you don't want to. So maybe there are going to be some people. By the way, people... how's, how's Uber going to go? Right. Well, that's the thing. It's casting right. quite a long shot. Well, I, I think that there is what's interesting with Lyft and then Uber especially is these are new generation IPOs where an awful lot of individual investors already own it. You had Goldman Sachs making available to their clients for two or three years as a private placement. That We did not have that back in the day. People were not able to get these things. Pre so you've had down rounds and uh, already with these companies, I mean, the Lyft issue was heavily democratized. People were able to access right. that a year and a half ago. And so I, I think that the Uber issue probably will bounce the same day. It depends how they price it. Lyft, they got a ridiculous pricing out of it. I think with Pinterest, it's the exact opposite. The, when they were down ticking the expectations, 15 to 17, it goes 24 first day. That's not what you hire your investment but bank to do. all three of these things have something in common, right? They have sales and no earnings. At least yeah. Zoom has earnings. Yeah. I mean, Zoom is a profitable company. Zoom is. Yeah. That's right. And I, and I don't really... I, you're right. None of them, the others have earnings. Yeah. I don't know that they really even have sales when you're talking about Lyft and yeah, but even Uber, What I admire about that, they so low bold expectations. Not only they're not going to make money near term, but we might never make money. Yeah. 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 You never see that. In it. I That's don't see I'm that. That's We're a trying, trying to get the Amazon. We're just, yeah. Yeah, right. We're just here. You're yeah. welcome. Thank you very, very much.